Hello class, this is Miss Augustine, and we are going to continue our discussion of the quantum mechanical model of the atom. So this is part two of the quantum mechanical model, and we're going to be discussing quantum numbers that we started to talk about in the previous set of notes. So remember the four quantum numbers specify the properties of the atomic orbitals and the electrons that are in the orbitals. And the first three quantum numbers result from solutions to the Schrodinger equation. So the first three quantum numbers indicate the energy level, the shape, and orientation of an orbital. And when I say orientation, I mean in space uh, using an xyz axis. The fourth quantum number describes the spin state of an electron in an orbital. So a uh, brief review, the four quantum numbers are number one, the principal quantum number. The second is the angular momentum quantum number. The third is the magnetic quantum number. And the fourth is the so-called spin quantum number. So let's take them one at a time. So the principal quantum number uh, is referring to the main energy levels that are assigned numbers according to their energy. So they're given integers and they're given integers as n equals 1 through 7. And spoiler alert, when we talk about the periodic table, there are seven rows in the periodic table that correspond to the seven principal energy levels. So as you're going out from the nucleus, the energy levels are numbered 1 through 7. 1 being the lowest energy and 7 being the highest. So if you'll recall the Bohr model of the atom, the planetary model, he proposed that the energy levels are equally spaced like the rungs of a ladder as you move out from the nucleus. But the actual energy levels um, as uh, proposed by Schrodinger and measured um, shows that the energy levels get closer together. So you can see as you move out from the nucleus, they're not equally spaced. And in fact, they get closer and closer together as you go from one through seven. Um, so the angular momentum quantum number, which has the symbol L, indicates the shape of the orbital. And each principal energy level has one or more sublevels and the number of sublevels is equal to the energy level. So for instance, the principal level one has one sublevel and it has a special name, it's called S. The second principal energy level has two sublevels, so it has S and P. The third level has three sublevels, S, P, and D. And the fourth, which is all we'll really be concerned with for this class, the fourth uh, principal energy level has four sublevels, and they have specific names, S, P, D, and F. So you'll notice that as you add layers, there are multiple sublevels, but you repeat. You always have S, and then P, and then D, and then F. And after F comes G, H, and I. The magnetic quantum number, M, indicates the orientation of an orbital around the nucleus and we use the XYZ axes to show that orientation. So the values of M are whole numbers including zero and they go from minus L to plus L. Each S sublevel has only one orbital. Each P sublevel has three orbitals. Each D sublevel has five orbitals and each F sublevel has seven. So it is worth noting that the number of orbitals goes up as odd numbers. So you go 1, 3, 5, 7, and then it would be 9, 11, and so on. So here is a summary showing the energy levels from 1 through 7, the number of sub sublevels within those principal levels. So again, they're the same as the energy levels, so 1 through 7. And then this is what they would look like. So at n equals 1, you only have one sublevel. It's s. At 2, you have 2, s and p, then spd, spdf, spdfg, h and i. So I have here an orbital visualizer. So let me open that up. So this is the University of Kentucky has 
an orbital visualizer um, with hydrogen-like orbitals. So if I click on what an S orbital looks like, um, the shape here is what the probability of finding an electron is. So remember that where this uh, region is the orbital shape, that's the region where it is 90% likely to find an electron. So the S has one orbital. I'm going to show you the P. The P sublevel has three, and these are on the X, Y, so X, Y, and Z axes. And again, the regions that you see here, it's roughly a dumbbell shape. This is what a P orbital would look like. So uh, the D has five possible orbitals. And so again, these are what the five D orbitals would look like. And then just for jollies, let's look at the F orbitals. So now there's seven, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. And if we wanted to see, I think this goes up to G. And so this would be nine orbitals. So let's go back to the S again, and I'll set it in motion. And again, these are the solutions to the Schrodinger equation. So the spin quantum number is the fourth uh, quantum number, and that gives you the spin orientation of the electrons, and they are assigned either plus a half or minus a half. Each orbital may only contain a maximum of two electrons. So if we're thinking about principal level one, which has only one sublevel s, that would only have one orbital. So continuing that thought, since each orbital may only contain a maximum of two electrons, and n equals one has just an s sublevel, then the maximum number of electrons for that energy level with only an s sublevel would be two for two electrons. So each s orbital is spherical in shape, as I showed you. Each p orbital is dumbbell shaped. And again, there are three of them on the x, y, and z axes. So um, here I'm showing you a different visualization, but again, you can see that they are on the x, the y, and the z axis. And if you thought about, uh, if you had a fully occupied p sublevel, then you would have orbitals um, interspersed like this picture here. And then the four d orbitals are clover shaped like this, the xy, the xz, the yz, and the x squared minus y squared. And again, these are all mathematical representations. And then the fifth d orbital is shaped like a dumbbell with a donut, and that is the z squared orbital. So now if we just do a tallying of how many maximum number of electrons can be at principal levels one through four, the way you remember it is two, eight, 18, 32. Where did I get these numbers? Well, at n equals one, there's only an S sublevel, one orbital, two electrons. For level two, you have the S and the P. S can hold two electrons, only one orbital. P has three orbitals, that means three times two, six electrons. Six plus two is eight. Uh, at n equals three, we're adding in two for the S, six for the P, and 10 for the D, that's where we get 18. And for n equals four, again, one, three, five, and seven orbitals, and multiply that times two for the electrons. So the maximum number at the fourth principal energy level would be 32 electrons. So this is an orbitron gallery of atomic orbitals. And I just like to show it to you because uh, in the next chapter, we're going to learn that the periodic table is organized according to where the electrons are and their energy levels. So these are S orbitals. Uh, this region is where the P orbitals are filling in. This central region are the D, and the inner transitions at the bottom of the periodic table represent the F sublevel filling in. So for now, this is Ms. Augustine signing off.